So, hi everyone. Uh, as you know, due to all the issues associated with the coronavirus, we needed to move our lectures here. So, what I wanted to tell you is that on this YouTube channel, you will find all the lectures from Introduction to Economic Analysis and on our uh, on our on Facebook page of our department, uh, uh, Lazarski University Department of Econometrics, you will find all the notes from the lectures from the first uh, till the uh, present one. Uh, now, this is just an introductory video, but I'm also gonna uh, uh, revise with you some things you should have done. Uh, already in macroeconomics class. So, money market. Uh, money market is of course market for the currency in the given country and like in any other market we have demand on this market as well as supply. Okay, uh, like supply in case of money market is actually uh, dictated exogenously, uh, is, is given exogenously because it's, it is set up by central bank. So we will assume it's given by some M0. Uh, and of course M0 uh, is a positive number. Then money demand like you learned in macroeconomics, depends mainly on two things. First one is the GDP or income. Generally, if we produce more goods, we need to uh, we need to have more money in order just to purchase them. You can, we can also look at it from the income side. The bigger is the uh, income of everyone, the more we need to have to pay them. So it doesn't matter how we look at it from the perspective of transaction or income, definitely uh, money demand should be positively related to the level of GDP. So we can include the K should be positive. And the second thing uh, that we should take into consideration is price of money, interest rate. Remember, like on any market, we, uh, we have quantity, which is the amount of money, and we need to have price, in this case, interest rate. Interest rate, so of course, money market is a specific market because when you buy money from the bank, you purchase it, when you purchase it, you promise to pay a bigger amount in the future. By how much more? It is given to you by uh, interest rate. So, now, the question is, should the relationship between money demand and interest rate be positive or negative? Look, this is a price. Uh, so, in case of demand, we expect negative relationship. Look, it makes perfect sense. The higher is the interest rate, the less money you become. Hold money is bigger. If you have $1,000 and interest rate in a bank is, is 10%, it means by not keeping this money in a bank, you lose $100 over the period of a year. If the interest rate would be just 5%, it would mean that you are losing only $50, uh, $50 over the period of a year. So the bigger is the interest rate, the higher is the cost uh, of maintaining money in form of uh, cash. Okay, so in this case we can also assume that L is bigger than zero. Okay, what, what else do we have here? Look, we have two equations, equation for demand, equation for supply. We need equilibrium condition, just equals money supply. Now look, from this we clearly see all the uh, how income and interest rate will affect uh, money demand. We see that the partial derivative of money demand with respect to income is equal to K. 
which is positive. So uh, the higher the income, the higher the money demand, and of course the partial derivative of money demand with respect to interest rate is negative L, which is a negative number. So let's just put this relationship on the graph. So if here we have interest rate, so the price of money, here we have the quantity, which is uh, the amount of money in the economy. Money supply is this M zero curve because the bigger is the money, uh, the bigger is the money supply, the bigger is the uh, the bigger will be the money supply. This is a vertical. Uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, this is a vertical line because we said it is exogenous. It is set up by the central bank, and now the bigger is the money supply, the further to the right this curve is going to lay. Then, we know that the relationship between interest rate and money demand is negative and linear, so we can draw it like this. Of course, at the intercept of the two, we have equilibrium interest rate. Now, what is going to happen if income is going to increase. Now, look, we see, we can see that from this derivative. The higher the income, the higher the money demand. And look, this, if GDP rises, we observe parallel shift of the money demand curve to a new location, and given the same money supply, equilibrium price, so interest rate should go up. And look, it makes perfect sense. Given the same supply and higher demand, we expect the price to go up. Okay, and look, this is all that we need to know about the money market, the money market for now. Uh, all the details and all the theory behind this, the, all these relationships, you were discussing in detail in your macroeconomics class. But <coughs> one thing we need uh, is to make a connection between national income model that we have done uh, uh, we've done previously and the money market. And look. We are going to assume that there is only one channel that represents this connection, and then channel uh, is, is associated with investment. So now let's move to investment and interest rate. Okay, so look. Let's just say, this far, we were assuming that investments are given exogenously. We were not explaining that. Now, we're going to derive a connection between investment and, uh, uh, between investment and uh, interest rate. Look, first, let's assume that not taking into consideration uh, uh, in, uh, uh, interest rate at all, we would have some level of investment D. Let this D would be positive, and let's just say, let, let's call D autonomous investment. Okay, now, what is the relationship between level of investment and uh, interest rate? Ah. Well, look, this relationship will be established through derivative di, d lowercase i, which for convenience in the future we will simply call i prime. And now, in this case, uh, what relation, uh, we, we need to now establish the sign of this derivative. And look, if a uh, we should remember that investments are purchases of capital goods by companies. 
So, what would motivate companies to buy more of these goods? Lower or higher interest rate? Look, if interest rate is lower, it means that the cost of a loan, so borrowing money from a bank, is lower. So, no, so with lower interest rate, companies are more willing to borrow money from the bank or from some other entities and to spend this money on purchases of capital goods. But of course, you can say, what if the company already has the money? Should this company take the, uh, take the interest rate into consideration? And the answer is, of course, because look, if interest rate is very high, it is not profitable for the company to purchase new capital goods, which might be a risky uh, endeavor. Maybe it would be better to take the money and put them into a bank. But if interest rate is getting lower, company would be more willing to, uh, to purchase some capital goods and consequently, uh, uh, and consequently to uh, 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 consequently uh, to uh, obtain money uh, through higher level of production. So look, we should expect that the relationship between investment and interest rate is strictly negative and in our linear model we, we will be using uh, uh, E, where E of course is positive but has a minus up front and it measures the sensitivity of investment to changes in interest rate. So consequently the derivative we were looking for is negative E. Now we can also put this relationship on a graph. We are still assuming that the relationship is a linear, is linear. So if here we have interest rate and here investment, then the relationship would look like this. If interest rate would be zero, we would have some level of investment D and with higher and higher and higher and higher investment, we expect uh, interest rate, I'm sorry, we expect the level of investment to fall. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is ISLM model that you also know from your macroeconomics class, but we are going to calculate it in a more detailed way using mathematics, of course, uh, uh, as a tool. But before we can do it properly, there is one more thing we need to introduce, and these are differentials, and differentials are going to be uh, the subject of our next, uh, of the next part. Thank you for your attention.